Hey guys, welcome to Get Busy Watching. I'm your host, Honest Dan. Let's talk movies. Relax, be cool. Cause if you don't, you'll act like a fool, so be cool. Before we get started, Halloween month is around the corner, and like last year, I'm planning to do a rapid fire style seven movie review of horror movies every week for October. What are some horror flicks that you enjoy? They can be great, they can be crap, they can be mainstream, obscure, comedy, legit scary, older, newer, for adults, not porn, that's not what I mean, don't get no funny ideas, ya pervs. Whatever the case is, I want your suggestions. A personal shout out in my video, unless you prefer to remain anonymous, however, I have one rule. No torture porn like Saw or Hostel. Nothing of that nature. Sorry, it's just not my cup of tea. Anywho, on with this review. Prior to seeing this, I had no idea what it was. I think I'd seen the poster once or twice around the internet, but nothing about the story. But then I decided to look a little deeper into it, and I realized that Coda is a code. <laughs> Get it? I'll play in traffic later. The point is, is that it stands for Child of Deaf Adults. And that alone piqued my interest. And my imagination just went wild. Was this a day in the life kind of story about a kid's challenges and joys of being in a family like this? Oh yeah, I felt like this deserved its own review. My only hope is that it's not just completely focused on the challenges. And also please don't do that thing where where the kid says, I wish I had a different family. Movies don't do that at all. I'll consider it a kindness if you don't do that. I'll be happy enough. So yeah, let's get to it and see just how close or far off that I was. This is my honest opinion of CODA. Ruby Rossi, played by Amelia Jones, is a teenager who is the only hearing person in her deaf family. She has a deep passion for singing and signs up for choir at school. And her teacher, Mr. V, played by Eugenio Derbez, thinks she has potential to really make something of her talents. But this comes at a terrible time when her family faces financial hardship. Her father, Frank, played by Troy Kotzer, her mother, Jackie, played by Marley Matlin, and her older brother Leo, played by Daniel Durant, who catch fish to sell, which Ruby helps out with as an interpreter, just learned that new sanctions and fees will be implemented and will cost more than they or any of the other fishermen can afford. It's good, it's a new one. Holy crap. This was really freaking good. Before I get to the review itself, I wanted to point out a quick fun fact. This is actually an American remake of a French film called The Bellier Family. I think I pronounced that right. I hope I pronounced that right. Which has a striking resemblance to the 1996 German film Beyond Silence. So, this Apple Plus flick has some history behind it. Are they any good? Because I might actually check them out. Anyway, I really like this one. It hits some notes that I don't really care for, but we'll get to it when we get to it. The flick wastes no time in getting us to get to know the family and how charming and yet unique they all still are. A true testament to the writing. Ruby is no dainty teenager. She gets up at the crack of dawn with her father and brother to help on the boat, getting her hands dirty, but also has an understanding of how the business works when negotiating with buyers of their fish. She knows when she's getting ripped off and isn't afraid to give those dudes the business. But when it comes to singing in choir class, she's self-conscious, insecure, even going so far as to run out of class when asked to sing on the first day. And I gotta say, if that really is Jones's singing voice, then she has a set of lungs. Happy 
Ruby is an endearing protagonist and Jones carries the story very well. Guess I'll be watching Lock and Key in the near future if this is the kind of talent she brings. Do you have something to say? I think so. And it ain't just the Ruby show. The family has such a great dynamic, and no two interactions feel the same between characters. I love the relationship between Jackie and Frank. They are so hilarious as a couple that still act like they're the ones in high school. They are so dirty-minded that I've had legit laugh-out-loud moments that most comedies don't always achieve. But they aren't just immature adults, they're allowed to be loving and caring parents with their own insecurities. Because Ruby has been such a great interpreter for X amount of time, Frank has become almost dependent on her being around. Just like others don't always know how to communicate with them, they're no better at knowing how to communicate with others. So when Ruby's passion for singing might actually take her away from the business, they start to panic, get selfish, Jackie in particular is a masterclass in guilt trips. Jeez, did I start to not like her when she started pulling that stuff. But it just goes to show how complacent they've been and how they've never even considered thinking outside of their own box. As for both Matlin and Kotzer, they're utterly fantastic. They are both so expressive. I would absolutely be down to see them in a comedy, just the two of them. But whether it's a comedy or drama, both are terrific. Uh, maybe we even call them herring bitches? And last, but certainly not least, is Leo the Big Brother. Probably my favorite Big Brother character put to film in a very long time and due in no small part to Durant's talent. What I love most about this family is that the adults seem like they're younger than they sometimes act and their kids act more like adults. Leo, while seemingly happy to be part of the family business, is all about trying to be more progressive and being more self-sustaining. The idea to sell their own fish was originally his idea. He has a strong desire to try and integrate with other people and fit in. Though he's unwavering in this, it's clear that it's still a challenge even for him. Eh? Oh. Get out of my face. Mike, go Get out of my face, freak. But more importantly, he's fully aware of how dependent the family is on Ruby, and has seemingly been trying to get them to be less dependent on her longer than she's been pursuing her singing lessons. Even more heartbreaking, they don't even let him try to handle all the things that they've relied on Ruby for, like communicating with others. He clearly wants that responsibility, but his parents don't even consider him. Later on in the story, when he learns that Ruby can sing, in his own way, he wants her to pursue that. He doesn't want his little sister to give up on her passion to help out a family that needs to learn how to stand on their own two feet. I would say he doesn't communicate that in the best ways, but that feels like an intended character flaw in Leo rather than poor writing. In a lot of ways, I would say in this home of breathtaking talent, Leo stands out as the scene stealer and we'll double what you're getting now. <laughs> Branching away from the Rossi family, I have one more praise that I, I can't just not give. Eugenio Derbez. This is the best role that he has ever done that I've seen. If I'm not mistaken, Derbez is considered to be one of the best comedic Mexican actors. Hard to argue with the man's achievements, that's for sure. In 2014, Variety magazine called him the number one most influential Hispanic male in the world. In 2016, he got his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Hell, the film Instructions Not Included? Apparently, it was wildly successful. He wrote, directed, and starred in it. It would go on to become one of the, if not the, most financially successful Spanish language films in both the US and Mexico. Okay, so the man deserves respect. But as you can probably guess, I personally didn't even know the guy existed until 2017's How to Be a Latin Lover. And I didn't care about it. Frankly, when it comes to his movies, I don't think I've ever liked them, or liked him in the movies that I have. 
Let's see, Dora and the Lost City of Gold, don't remember a minute. The Angry Birds Movie 2, hated it more than the first one. Nutcracker in the Four Realms, hilariously bad. I don't remember what role he had. Overboard, yeah, didn't care about that. Geostorm, didn't care about him. Love the movie, though, <laughs> for how bad it was. Yep, yeah, How to Be a Latin Lover, didn't care about it. Okay, Book of Life, I really like that one. Don't remember what role he played. Beverly Hills Chihuahua, yep, still don't remember what he did. Oh, Jesus Christ, this man was in both Jack and Jill and Pledge This? My dude, talk about career regrets. Yeah, I just never saw it. I never understood his popularity. He was just another comedy actor to me. But now I can finally say I get it. Or at least I acknowledge that there's more to him than an overactor belting out bad jokes from unimpressive scripts. Make no mistake, I have my issues to point out later, but for the first time, I didn't see a role that he was just silly for the sake of being silly. I saw Mr. V as a person who legitimately cares about Ruby and wants to see her get shot into the stratosphere with her voice. He's clearly passionate, knows what he's talking about, and strikes that balance of being a strict teacher, but one that knows how to cultivate talent. I have to say, Derbez impressed me here and I hope he gets roles like this more often. Do you know what Bowie said about Bob Dylan? A voice like sand and glue. Okay, much as I love this, I I have to talk about a couple of splinters, let's call them. That kind of did bug me. I don't really want to talk about them, but I'm going to be that guy. Starting off somewhat small and easy, there are a few character choices that didn't quite flow as well as they should have. One example that comes to mind is later on in the story. So the family has a fight. The next morning, Ruby is supposed to help out on the boat, but doesn't show up due to still being mad and to hang out with her romantic interest, Miles, played by Ferdia Walsh Pilo. Yes, of Sing Street fame. If you haven't seen Sing Street, we cannot be friends. Anyway, the Coast Guard takes away their license because of them being deaf and not having answered their radio. And another fight ensues within the family, basically blaming Ruby for not showing up. Ruby says that she doesn't think she should be. I don't either. So the next scene is the court hearing, I guess. And then the very next scene is the Rossies at the dinner table. And Ruby declares that she's going to put school on hold and help out on the boat full time. I have an issue with this. This change in Ruby's attitude comes out of nowhere. In the second family squabble scene, she says that she doesn't accept responsibility for what happened. But then two scenes later, she acts like she's guilty and puts her life behind her to help. What changed her mind? I mean, I can deduce it was during that court hearing when the officer asks if they have a hearing person on the boat to avoid these situations. But I guess what I would personally prefer is a more intimate moment with Ruby who comes to that conclusion herself. Even a quick scene between the court hearing and the dinner table scene that shows her looking at her family boat and breaking down. Showing now she blames herself and this was the moment where she decided to quit singing to do this instead. Two scenes and that's enough to put her passion on hold? I just wish there was one more push over that edge to make her decision more understandable. And despite my praises for Derbez, I don't always like Mr. V as a character. He's yet another eccentric teacher who is low-key brilliant, until he becomes high-key brilliant and just feels really out of place. Yeah, okay, some serious explaining to do. I acknowledge that everyone in this story has their fair share of quirks, but the writing, directing, and acting has been grounded enough to make those quirks legit up to this point. Like, these are people that could very well be real, but I've been to high school. I don't recall a single teacher quite this eccentric. Sure, I've had teachers who have been funny and made an otherwise boring class not so boring, but to be this. I'm meditating. Two minutes to go. Uh, no. I don't know a single teacher who was like this. 
The dog breathing exercise was fine. I've taken acting classes before, and teachers really get off on making you do weird stuff and calling it a breathing exercise or to get the jitters out of you. So this was real enough for me. But then you have another scene where he challenges Ruby into explaining what singing means to her, which again, feels like an incredibly grounded and real moment for him. Actually, it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie, but it's still meant to be taken in conjunction with this. I also don't quite agree with how mean-spirited he gets later on. I get it, he's passionate about singing and he sees that Ruby is not only passionate but has serious talent. He wants to see her go places with that talent, blah blah blah, but for, for a teacher to be this unconcerned about her personal life, to take it that personal when she's late or when, you know, life happens, any normal teacher would be understanding. This is the kind of writing best suited for a more personal figure like a family member, but not a teacher. I understand teachers that go out of their way to help a struggling student don't appreciate being stood up, but one would think by a certain point they just play it by ear. Figure out the pattern and just let pieces fall where they will. But I don't believe any teacher would act like Mr. V does and essentially blame the student for having personal matters. He is not the center of Ruby's world. That's the third time you're late. Well, it's only 20 minutes. I don't care if it's one minute. It shows me that you don't respect me or my time. Yeah, I have a couple of issues with the flick, but you want to know something? And I keep saying this, a movie can have flaws if everything surrounding those flaws is knocked out of the park. And boy howdy did this thing fly. For my personal tastes, this is the heavyweight emotional powerhouse feel good movie of the year and I could not recommend it more. My honest rating for Coda, a strong four out of five. Thanks so much for watching you guys, I really appreciate it. Have a great day, stay safe and healthy out there, hope to see you soon. One final caveat as you guys move on with your day, I've decided to test my luck at a Patreon, so please consider supporting the channel. No obligations of course, no content is gated off, but any and all support would mean a lot. Links in the description, have a great one folks.